Saquon is hurt. Danny Dimes is here. And Baker still sucks. And we're talking about the rest of it right here on episode 78 of the Fantasy Whispers. Yes, we're back again. We're back again. We're back. Hey, let's pump up the volume. Right here. <laughs> What's up, Whisper Nation? It's Monday, September 23rd, and you're listening to episode 78 of the Fantasy Whisperers with your hosts, Johnny Game Time Hicks and Big Travi, and me, Chelsea. And if you want to follow the show, you can do so on Twitter at TF Whispers. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at the Fantasy Whispers. And you should definitely visit the website, thefantasywhispers.com. We've got articles, the latest episodes, rankings, and totally new for 2019. We've got our Patreon account you can help us support the show by joining as a patron of the fantasy whispers where you'll gain access to a ton of bonus content so head on over to patreon.com and search the fantasy whispers today well chelsea thank you for the intro but much like my fantasy team this show is already off the rails (laughs) so uh, i just want to say welcome in whisper nation to episode 78 uh this is our week three reaction show Obviously, a little bit of rough start here on Monday morning, but maybe you're in the same boat. That's why you're here. If you could come in and click like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not, if you're listening, thank you so much. Maybe leave a review if you can. Uh, We're we're jacked for this show. Obviously, week three came out um, and a lot of things happened and and we'll we'll dive into a lot of those. But just leaving us wondering, like, do we know anything about football? Like I, I've been playing this game for over ten years now, and I, uh, I'm ready to retire. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm ready to just say, see you later. Uh, I've had enough. Uh, I'm out. What, you, what about you, Johnny? You start to get to a point where it just becomes numb. Like you just, you <laughs> you start expecting the unexpected here. Uh, I know we'll get into a lot of it the show, but Travis, I was just watching these games, and it was just like. I felt like I, I was just stuck in the mucky muck. I couldn't escape it. Like all these matchups I should have been destroying weren't happening. And then guys that shouldn't have been going off were going off. And what's going off? We're going to make we're going to make a little bit clear water, hopefully out of this mud. I don't know. I don't know if we can do it, but we'll try, Travis. Chelsea, did you feel the same this week or uh, where, where, where are you at? Where do you stand after Sunday's action? Oh, boy. I mean, we saw six totally new quarterbacks get their starts yesterday. And along with it, a whole heck of a lot of other uh, newness and unexpectedness on the field. Um, Yeah, it was a Sunday to remember or maybe one to forget. We'll see uh, (laughs) come next Sunday. But excited to do a recap episode with you all and excited for these new segments you've got, too. Yeah, I got a couple new segments that we'd like to mix in some good ones for right fresh after Sunday. Get that reaction in. Uh, but before we hop into that reaction, Chelsea, we've got some news and notes, right? That's right. And we've got a, actually before that, we got a whisper from the nation. Oh, nice. Yeah. A nice little review we wanted to share. Johnny, do you want to share that review with us? Yeah. So this one comes from Damian Adams, 98, gave us a five star review, said what? best fantasy pod. If you are a serious fantasy football player, this is the podcast for you. These guys have so much knowledge and have helped me in a major way. Travis, this is back to back people now that we have fooled they they think we have a lot of knowledge in fantasy <laughs> yeah. football uh i feel sorry for them but we greatly appreciate them supporting us and liking our content anyway <laughs> no i i think it's just like you know uh we do a lot of the work and we do we crunch a lot of these numbers so that whisper nation could be successful uh if we ever were to show you our personal records you may not want to dive into that <laughs> same work but we try to make you guys successful and we will keep working hard to do so. Um, so we appreciate you, Whisper Nation. That's the truth. And uh, now I think it's time for news and notes from around the NFL. This segment's brought to you by Fanatic. That's F-A-N-A-T-I-Q. That's where fantasy meets IQ. I love that. Uh, Fanatic has done some amazing work to their app this offseason, including adding articles, podcast episodes, player stats, and beat writer updates all within their app. So head on over to the App Store on your Apple device and download that today. We've got a bunch of injury news, and we'll just jump straight into it. Uh, Saquon Barkley. This is sad. That dreaded 
dreaded high ankle sprain. I know we're going to talk more about Saquon and what this means for the Giants later in the episode, but a couple of words, please, for our man, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, this one's sad. I will say that I think he avoided a serious, serious injury here. Uh, I do not think it's going to be season ending from what I can gather. Um, it looks like a high ankle sprain. These tend to be multi multi week injuries. So hopefully you scooped up uh, Wayne Gallman in your efforts to get that handcuff for Saquon or you have a deep uh, running back stable that you can survive these weeks. Uh, you, but I will guys... say there was some some good news and Saquon was able to hop around and celebrate the Giants win on his healthy leg. Uh, yeah, you could so give him was, a ball just like that. It was. I mean, amazing. maybe. Yeah, he was Saquon moving. goes out and plays on one leg. It would probably be a lot better than some of my starting running backs. Um, so I, th I think there's a there's hope there. Uh, yeah, I I think uh, he could fall in the end zone a time or two. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that was really good to see that at least Saquon was in high spirit. So uh, hopefully yeah. it's kind of the same injury uh, as Tevin Coleman. So probably out a few weeks. We don't know any more. Uh, that's just to the extent of our knowledge at this time. Great. And we had a uh, Colt by receiver T.Y. Hilton left the game with a quad injury. Are we worried about T.Y.'s long term health here? Yeah. So this is uh, this is something to monitor here because T.Y. has been uh, the number one target here for um, Jacoby Brissett by a long shot. Um, coming into l last week, he had a dominating 26 plus uh, percent market share. And the next best was uh, Eric Ebron at 13%. So we're looking at a guy that Brissett really relied on here. And uh, so we will uh, we will continue to monitor that and stick with us. We'll get, we'll get you the updates you need on that one. Excellent. Uh, two Patriots receivers that we're going to talk about here. First, Julian Edelman left the game with a chest injury. And then we had Josh Gordon, who landed really hard on his hip and sort of his face and back. Sort of his whole body just got crushed into the ground. <laughs> Jeez, brutal. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it feels like just yesterday we were talking about the Patriots having a really scary, dominant-looking offense. And are we still feeling that way after these injuries? Uh, I'm not going to get on record and, and doubt the Patriots, uh, no matter what kind of injuries they receive. Philip Dorsett has looked good. Uh, they obviously did not have James White in this game, but James White will be back. It was He was having a child, so... I do believe, well, His he wasn't having, was a having a child. His wife was having a child, but um, uh, together they were having a child. Um, anyways, what I'm getting at here is I think that James White could be a nice add or a buy low uh, if if uh, Julian Edelman or Josh Gordon were to miss any time here because we know how when there's not a lot of targets at the wide receiver tight end position, um, we have seen James White step up as this team's uh, basically – de facto slot wide receiver so a couple of things to take note of next week is week four uh they this is that'll be the last week without their tight end uh that they signed over the off season so um watson uh, benjamin watson will be coming back to the team so they'll be able to get another weapon there uh, the Josh Gordon, he uh, did actually exit twice. One was for all the body parts, and then the second <laughs> one was uh, for his hand, which I guess is also a body part. But uh, it was just <laughs> kind of weird. But he came back. He ended up coming back into the game. And I think moving forward, he will be fine. They're saying Julian Edelman will be fine. This team is deep. They can win in multiple ways. We saw it. We saw Sexy Rexy come in there. How about that? How about Sexy Rexy? Sorry, I had to give him a shout-out on today's show. <laughs> how right. about that um one a couple more injuries to report uh we had running back LaShawn mccoy who left the game with an ankle injury thoughts words on LaShawn? well he came into this game with the ankle injury we obviously saw some late news before that game with daryl williams sneaking in ahead of him as the starter mccoy looked good though in this game he was doing a lot of things on that very high powered offense this will be something to monitor i imagine he'll be on the same practice schedule so you won't know until a game time decision um but snag uh daryl williams if you're a mccoy owner or if not you want to try and snag him up and see what you can get here Great. are you are you really were uh willing to go out on waivers and spend money on daryl williams do you think it's it's worth an ad yeah i saw daryl williams be the spell back here the guy that got the start above darwin thompson 
Uh, I would take anybody who's starting for the Chiefs uh, running back. Okay. And right now it looks like Darrell Williams is the next in line. So okay. as much as I personally love Darwin Thompson and what I saw out of the preseason, uh, we mm-hmm. talk about it all the time. You have to be able to adapt. And what I saw yesterday in that game uh, was Darrell Williams be a guy that could not only catch passes, but ran as their bruising back uh, when they needed short yardage as well, too. So uh, Darrell Williams is worth a speculative ad as a guy who could take over that job. All right, and one last injury to report, and maybe we can just speak about all the injuries that we've seen on this Eagles offense. But Alshon Jeffrey had some speculation coming into this game that he may play, and that did not happen. And it looked like they lost another member of that receiving core and a Mm. tight end, Dallas Goddard. What's happening to my Eagles? They're falling falling apart. Um, But you know, the reason why we wanted to bring this one up was because the Philadelphia Eagles do play this Thursday night against the Green Bay Packers on hopefully going down. Will be a good uh, Thursday night game, actually. So this is something that you're going to want to monitor. It was, you know, he was very, very close to giving it a go. They called him out right before the, you know, 30 minutes before the game. Uh, the information came out. So definitely keep this closer monitored. Look, Wentz needs another target in there. You can't just throw it to Nelson Aguilar and Zach Ertz. They struggled. I expect Alshon to give it to go this Thursday. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. I will say that, like Johnny said, the Eagles are in desperate need of the, of Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey back in their lineup. We've seen two games in a row where big drops cost them this fo- the football game. Um, so you're seeing right now that they are in need of these guys. So hopefully for the Eagles' sake, uh, they get both of these guys back. Obviously, Deshaun is probably not going to suit up on Thursday, though. Well, that wraps it up for news and notes from around the league brought to you by Fanatic. Thanks. I know we're going to talk about some of those things more in depth, too. But first, we've got this brand new segment. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, We're going to talk about where we were right and where we were wrong. We have to talk about the wrong part. Absolutely. (laughs) Always. I mean, listen, Whisper Nation. Whisper Nation deals with us putting out tons of speculation, mm, yeah. hopes and dreams. We just <laughs> let it all fly. And I think that this segment's really great because it'll hold us accountable. Mm-hmm. We get to look back at some of the things we said and just call ourselves out where we were right or where we're wrong. Somebody, I think fantasy could use I didn't wrong sign up for accountability here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm down. I'm psyched. Uh, let's work through this. Uh, Chels, let us know. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll start happened? at the quarterback position first. Uh, we were so right that Jimmy Garoppolo was going to be bad. <laughs> we were so right. He, he this is actually so I'm gonna I'm gonna hang my hat uh, for Johnny here. I actually did like Jimmy G as a top ten option, so I was wrong. Johnny was right here. Uh, we actually talked about Jimmy G on our uh, ranking show last week, where Johnny took a hard stance of Jimmy G outside of the top ten. Um, as a starter and you know nearing a two quarterback league wouldn't even start Jimmy G Um, so kudos to Johnny here he saw more in the new Pittsburgh defense and in what San Francisco likes to do uh, that that steered him away from Jimmy G nice Uh, and you were wrong you were (laughs) so wrong on Russell Wilson I couldn't be 45 times wrong yeah yeah (laughs) here's the thing uh I Russell Wilson just may be somebody that it doesn't really matter uh, volume anymore. Like this guy is just so special. Uh, I knew, I knew he was special. That was never my argument coming into this year that Russell Wilson was not a special quarterback. It was the fact that this offense continues to want to run the football. Um, But given the way that they got down in this game, given the way that Chris Carson continues to fumble um, Rashad Penny's hurt, uh, the run game may not be what they want it, and that means Russell Wilson has to put on his cape and score Superman-like points with 45 points um, in most leagues. Uh, that was an epic performance. Yeah, certainly. Well, let's uh, keep it going through the running back position. We were very right about Alvin Kamara and also Frank Gore. Anything to yeah, say about Frank those Yeah, Frank Gore, two? dialing it back. We told you to start him, uh, especially if you joined us for the lineup show on Sunday morning. We definitely was like, put Frank Gore in. The guy dialed it back. He fell in the end zone at the end, uh, gave you a good, solid fantasy day, and continued uh, You know that Bengals giving up a solid running back each and every single week. Love it. Way to go, Love Frank it. Gore. Oh, but we were wrong on Darwin Thompson and Chris uh. Carson. I will say I, I'll take responsibility for the Darwin <laughs> Thompson. 
Uh, I don't know where this came from. Uh, Daryl Williams. Listen, there was so much speculation. There was a stupid tweet that came out right between, uh, right before the games, and then it even confirmed what I thought was going to happen. It said that you know, like Darwin Thompson was supposed to be at worst second best to get off, uh, get touches in this offense. And what do you know? And it said Lashawn McCoy was third. And then what do you know? Like Lashawn McCoy actually started the game. He got the majority of the carries until he went down. This that was frustrating. I apologize, but I was with you, Whisper Nation. I had him starting in several leagues. Uh, going back to the wide receiver category, we were pretty right on Mike Evans. And boy, if you put Mike Evans in, you're happy with that one. Yeah, we talked about it last week on the show, on the ranking show. Like this was going to be your last time to be able to buy low on Mike Evans, and I liked Roto World's update was uh buy low door is officially yeah. shut on mike evans yeah. as he rocks the fantasy world with three touchdowns this week i mean uh chris godwin kind of disappeared on the other end because of this and you know even even uh, oj howard got a little bit of love uh this week so it was kind of nice to see some of the guys that we had predicted in the off season to run this offense uh get their run right and we were wrong on Devontae Adams, on Kenny Galladay, on Sterling Shepard. I'm sure there's a longer list, but we'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shepard was a guy I had, uh, you know, I had on my roster in, in our league of record. I wanted to wait on to see what could happen with Danny uh, Daniel Jones or a.k.a. Danny Dimes. And so, uh, yeah, we were wrong because we weren't ready to pull the trigger right away. But it looks like Sterling Shepard could be considered wide receiver two or above every single week now. Uh, Kenny G, you'd be su- you're you're a little surprised in a game that Matt Stafford was slinging it around that Kenny G didn't get his better days to come for Kenny G, and Devontae Adams. We might be seeing a little bit of that sneaky regression that we had been talking about after dominating this league in a touchdown upside way over the last two years. Devontae Adams seems to be the steady drumbeat for the Packers to get down the field. Not seeing as much love in the red zone with the running game working there and uh, some other things for uh, this offense. But I also think there is some silver lining here. The Packers offense has not hit that full uh, 100%, you know, hitting on all cylinders just yet. They, they seem to sputter out in games. So there, sh- there could be some, uh, you know, he could be a buy low guy right now. Excellent. Well, just two more categories. We're going to talk about where we are right and wrong with tight end, starting with Greg Olson. Pleasantly correct. Yeah, you're going to you're going to fire up whatever tight end is playing the Arizona Card- Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> they are giving up a, a massive amount of yards and touchdowns to tight ends. So whenever whenever you got your tight end going up against Arizona, definitely plug them in and play. And was it on that basis alone that you were right on Greg Olson? You don't think Greg Olson's a good candidate for next week? Uh, no, Greg Olson is going to. I mean, Josh Allen or not Josh Allen, but uh, um Kyle, Kyle, Allen. Kyle Allen. Allen look great. So I think that, you know, moving forward, you can start him. I'm firing awesome. up all all Carolina Panthers. No, I'm not going <laughs> to jump that much, but we'll see what what this de- what this team can do against a better defense. Awesome. And this one's a heartbreaker. Mark Andrews, uh, man, I wish he wasn't in this friend category. of the show, friend of friend the show. Of Mark show. Andrews. Very frustrating. Have him in a ton of lineups and uh, he really didn't do anything yesterday. He came out, he warmed up, they gave him a go, they gave him the green light, and he just didn't get in. It all went to boil. Uh. (laughs) Moving along, uh, Buffalo. We were pretty right about starting Buffalo's defense. That's awesome. And very wrong about the Saints. Give us a few final words. Yeah, so the Saints, that's a little bit shocking for me that Seattle went and laid as much of an offensive egg as they did at home. And, you know, the Saints capitalized on it. There seemed to be... You know, they got that uh, fumble recovery for a touchdown after, you know, the week before they did not get that from the refs. So it's kind of fun to see that for them. But, um, yeah, just didn't think the Saints were an option here on the road uh, in a game that they, you know, the Saints were not favored. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll they were on the road. Teddy Bridgewater, the Saints have never had a quarterback that's won a game for them besides Drew Brees ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> in the drew Brees era for sure yeah so that's uh it was it was wild to kind of think in such a tough place to play that this defense would rise up here right 
Johnny, any final words? Nope, that's it. I don't want to keep talking about where I was wrong. Let's move yeah, on. Here. <laughs> Love the new segment, though. Yeah, yeah. moving right along. Johnny's like, hey, let's try this new segment out. And uh, he ends up ditching it at the first chance he can. Right. All right. <laughs> let's get into the meat of the show. All right. So we're jumping in now after our week three recap. And we talked a little bit about Saquon at the top of the show here. But the point here is that what is life without Saquon looking like? And if you're a pass catcher for the New York Giants, it, it's looking pretty good, right, Johnny? Yeah, Daniel Jones looking great. He went 23 for 36, 336 yards and two passing touchdowns. He also added two rushing touchdowns, which you know how much us us fantasy owners love rushing touchdowns. So, I mean, he looked great and he looked at every bit of, you know, for all the flack that we, you know, gave him for getting drafted. Look, what we saw in the preseason is looking like the real deal. This guy's looking like he can actually be very, very good and makes you wonder why they didn't go to Eli Manning sooner. Uh, look at look at some of these other guys. Travis Shepard popping off seven for a hundred and a touchdown. Uh, Ingram had a monster day six uh, or thirteen target. Sorry, it should have been six target or six catches for one hundred and thirty five yards. I believe is what he ended up with and a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, seventy five yarder was uh, his major seventy five yard touchdown run was where he got the bulk of that. And I just I look at Ingram with that touchdown run. Like, what other tight ends can you see that rip off touchdown runs like that? I mean, the guy looks Kittle, like an electric. Yeah, I, I mean, this guy just shredding defenses. Uh, he's done it multiple times now. Obviously, he laid the egg last week with Buffalo. That's a tough defense. But you look what he did to Dallas. You look what he's done now to Tampa Bay with both quarterbacks. Ingram is is one of those guys that's an early running for a fantasy MVP. He's definitely a guy that was in that second tier that looks to be jumping into the first. I love it. Good for him. And then good for him. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you also talked about this, like, so here's the deal. Not only does Daniel Jones increase these pass catchers, we've got, uh, we'll have golden Tate coming back after next week. He'll be back from the four game suspension. So you'll kind of have the fully loaded ops offense there. Do you see Daniel Jones as a streamable option? Um, Oh, we, in single quarterback leagues. Well, let's I mean, this Todd Bowles defense did, had looked good through the first couple of weeks. Again, let's I would like to see maybe one more of a solid production. But I mean, based on his numbers, Travis, and the lack uh, lack of talent at that position around him, you know, he didn't have Saquon for the majority of this time. Uh, you know, he didn't have Tate. Uh, and now I know that Eli didn't have Tate either, but I don't think that would have mattered. I think he would have still sucked. Uh, so Daniel Jones, I think, has an ability definitely to be a streamable option for sure. And whether he could just be a weekly option, that could also be, you know, yet to be seen. But I wouldn't be surprised based on these numbers. Now, I don't expect me at four touchdowns every time, but he could be a good good option for you. <clears throat> yeah, so they play the the Redskins, uh, followed by the Vikings, then the Patriots. So not too great over the next three games. We'll see how Daniel Jones is able to um, respond after those next few games. But the Redskins, that's a nice matchup. You may, if you're if you're desperate, you may want to check that out. All right. So moving on here, we're going to talk about Sony Michelle and our concern level here for him as he goes nine carries for eleven yards, gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Um, but uh, what do we think here, Johnny, uh, all these different backs that are working in, obviously James white wasn't even in this game. So you expected this to maybe be a Sony Michelle game, especially with how much, how favored the Patriots were coming in here. What is your concern level for Sony Michelle? I have a lot of concerns for Sony Michelle, Travis. And like you said, they were up in this game. Like this game script was supposed to be tailored for Sony. And yet you look at the end of the day and Rex Burkhead actually had more carries and more touches than Sony Michelle. My concern is that Sony is becoming a very limited uh, into just, you know, kind of a touchdown upside kind of running back. And that if we didn't, if it, we didn't have the name Sony Michelle attached to uh, a new England Patriots running back, Travis, would we be giving this guy, will we be trading him? Will we say trade this guy? Look, 
three games. First uh, first game against the Steelers, 15 attempts, only 14 rushing yards. Uh, against the Dolphins, who everyone goes off against the Dolphins, 21 carries for 83 yards. Okay, that's pretty nice. He had a touchdown in there. But then against the Jets, which should be another positive game script, Travis, only nine carries for 11 yards, does get in the end zone to salvage your day. But there should be some real caution flags for Sony Michelle, and I gotta hand it to it. I gotta hand it to Chelsea because when we were in the in uh, before the draft season, and we were talking about guys that we might have liked or whatever, and and Chelsea took a, hand, a hard stand on Sony and was like, I don't understand why people are drafting this guy. We don't we don't know what he's gonna do. We're basing it all off of this you know high upside touchdown potential. But Travis. If you're only getting nine touches and this offense is as potent as it is with as many pass catchers and, and running back weapons, at what point are we selling Sony? Yeah, I'd be a little bit uh, hesitant to sell him just yet. This was his you know, first game under the 15 carry mark. You, you alluded to it. He had the 21 carries against Miami. He's had a couple touchdowns in three games. Um I don't I understand you spent some capital on him, but you didn't spend a ton. He did have some of this baked into his draft price uh, when you took him. So I do like Sony here. We'll see how this offense. I'm also hesitant to see what happens with those wide receivers. And we know what happens with the Patriots down the stretch here. They tend to turn into a run first football team, even more so than they already are. And they tend to lean on their running backs. We saw Sony see a huge amount of work last year over their playoff stretch and into the Super Bowl as well. So I really actually think that Sony is a guy that you could maybe look at that owner and buy a little low here on, based on what happened in this game. I mean, we look back at the Jets game with Nick Chubb. He had 18 carries for only 62 yards. So I think that people are, are, are sleeping a little bit on the Jets' defense and what they were able to do here. And I think that the way to attack them was through the air, and the Patriots uh, tried to do that with Edelman and such. So I, I, don't, I don't think that it's time to panic just yet on Sony. Definitely monitor this, and this is kind of the concern that happens when you draft Patriots running backs. So, um, moving on here, uh, we're going to talk about something that's probably a little tough for Johnny to talk about here, and that's the quarterback situation in Carolina with Kyle Allen, who just just ripped apart the the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday, Johnny. Do we have a controversy here in, in Carolina with Kyle Allen? Uh, I think that he gave a really good argument to have one. Uh, certainly, like, the Cardinals' defense was not uh, that great, and they were even worse than they had been playing la yesterday. Now, Kyle Allen is a relatively new quarterback. There isn't a whole lot of film on him. But, Travis, this is kind of interesting. He had... 15 so far this year he he had 15.4 touchdown percentage that's astronomical that will definitely come down the average quarterback has about four to five percent is typically where they're at so you know he, he's throwing a lot of touchdowns even if you go back to his he played a game last year at the end of the season against the Saints backups and you know he he did throw for two touchdowns there as well so you're looking at two back-to-back -back starts for him or, or two starts where he's thrown six touchdowns and Cam Newton is dealing with this you know shoulder uh ankle there who else knows maybe maybe a little bit of you know concussion I don't know uh, but there's certainly something wrong with Cam Newton. Definitely, if you yeah. looked at Cam Newton's fashion sense, you might say he's dealing with a concussion. Yeah. Um, so Cam Newton is definitely struggling, Travis. And if Carolina continues to win and win, you know, and Josh Allen is putting up some good numbers, you know, two to four touchdowns, could it actually be a controversy there in Carolina? Cam Newton's getting a little bit older, and if Josh, uh, if Kyle Allen can really run this offense you know they're they have a week seven bye. do you honestly think cam comes back before then uh i could see it happening we'll just have to see what i mean cam may rush himself back based on the the way that kyle yeah. allen's playing um but here's what i'll say i think more on the fantasy side of this is look at what he was able to do for everyone in this offense that you had been thirsty for to get going i right. mean Greg Olson, seven targets, six for 75 and two touchdowns. Curtis Samuel, seven targets, five for 53 and a touchdown. DJ Moore, only two targets, but got one for 52-yard touchdown. 
Um, so you're talking about all the weapons that we were excited about coming into the year for Cam, which made Cam so valuable in the ninth round uh, in Falls drafts. And now you're looking at Kyle Allen, at least against this Cardinals defense, able to keep that going. So you definitely like what's going on there. And Christian McCaffrey still got hit. Yes, of course. And and you know that's going to happen regardless. But it was able to happen in uh, you know in unison with the rest of these guys. And so I'm really excited about what I see here. Um, I will continue. You know, I benched DJ Moore in a lot of leagues based on not knowing what was going to happen here with this quarterback. Um, I think you could feel confident with DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Greg Olson, and the bunch um, going forward as long as they're not facing a super imposing defense. So Texans, Jags, Bucks, 49ers are the next four games. I can see them winning all of those, and you're not really scared about any of those defenses in particular. Yeah, I would agree with that. Nobody there really scares you so much that you're going to be uh, benching those skilled players. Mm -hmm. So definitely a big fan of what Allen was able to do. But moving on to another Allen that stayed hot uh, and continues to just scorch the earth that he's upon is that Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers. Johnny, 13 for 183 and two touchdowns on Sunday. (laughs) This guy, I mean, he must have had like, 50 targets. I mean, every time I turned around, this guy was catching uh, an insane amount of balls. Uh, he continues to be the guy that, you know, we talked about it. If Philip Rivers is able to lock in on Keenan Allen, he's almost invaluable. We do see this, though, where Allen does have these stretches in his career where he goes on these tears of five games and then tends to disappear. Do you see this being more of that or do you see him actually sustaining this torrid pace throughout the rest of the year? Well, I think it certainly depends on the health of BMW. Big Mike Williams, he's been battling a knee injury, and I think this bodes well for Keenan Allen. So as long as that is in place, uh, Hunter Henry is, remains out, uh, they will actually start to feed Keenan Allen. I, you know, we had always said this. You know, Keenan Allen is a boss wide receiver. Just Phillip Rivers tends to spread the ball around. Well, when you start to get down and, you know, you have Inman in there and and – Travis Benjamin, who can't catch a ball to save his life either, uh, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to go to either Keenan Allen or you're going to go to Austin Eckler. So I think that as long as BMW is injured or, you know, dealing with a knee ailment, I think that Keenan Allen is going to feast and he's going to feast hard and eat 75% of that meal. Yeah, he's he's killing it right now. 10 targets, 15 targets, and then 17 in week three. Yeah. Uh, the guy just continues to eat, eat, eat. And they've got Miami, Denver, and Pittsburgh on Ooh, the slate next. So uh, nice. of, yeah, it sounds like you're going to be riding the key away for a while here. Um, moving on here, we're going to talk about the San Francisco 49ers and just about the fact that this offense continues to spread the ball around. You never really know who it's going to every week. You never really know what to do with these running backs. Um, It works for them, Johnny, but is it working for fantasy owners? Uh, I mean, to this point, yes and no, right? So Jeff Wilson, if you've been playing this guy in a flex position, you're happy because he's been, you know, falling into the end zone at least once, if not twice in games. Uh, you know, 18 or eight for 18 carries for Jeff Wilson. You don't like the carry amount. It's going to, it's going to leave you a little, you know, uh, tight on the collar. If you know what I mean, you're going to be sweating it out a couple of games, but certainly you like what the end result is. And then most dirt, you know, 12 for 79, Travis, this is what they're going to do. They're going to split this up. Uh, I don't necessarily think I want to be a part of this, uh, backfield. In fact, I'm getting really upset at the entire 49ers offense at the moment (laughs) as uh, I own multiple players uh, at different positions. And it's just frustrating. You don't know what their game plan is going to be from week to week. I mean, yes, we know they're going to run the ball and set up the play action. But, I mean, the wide receivers are inconsistent. Again, I told you, uh, Travis and I had a discussion uh, off off camera earlier this week. I said I I would believe I wouldn't be surprised if Pettis had a good game and Pettis did get in the end zone in this one. Kittle remains to be a, a freaking ghost of himself. I don't know what what's going on over there. He must be drinking some dirty water from Jimmy Graham or or Jimmy Garoppolo or something because I don't know. He's allergic to touchdowns all of a sudden. 
And uh, so, yeah, I, I just think that this is going to be a little bit of a fantasy headache. And, you know, yeah, you can plug these guys in as flex plays, but it's hard to think that you can rely on them as being a real solid, you know, RB2 or a wide receiver one or wide receiver two. You just got to hope well, you hit the right numbers. I agree and disagree to some points for the wide receivers, the pass catchers. Yeah, I think it is a little more sketch. I think you're not going to know from week to week. I think what we've seen out of the, the running game, though, is that they're going to lean on the running game. Shanahan has always done this. Um, he's always leaned heavily on the running game. And we're getting 12 to 15 touches for both backs here. And Breda and um, Mostert have done well with those touches. Now, yes, I understand they're not going to get that goal line carry, it looks like, because Jeff Wilson's going to come in there. But I think this speaks to Tevin Coleman, who will return from injury eventually. And I think that he is a guy that they trust actually in the red zone. We'll see. I mean, Wilson scored every time they've given it to him. But still, I think Coleman could slide into where Mostert or Breda is going with the 12 to 15 touches and be a red zone guy which makes them a little bit more multidimensional. So we'll see. I think that you've been you've been okay starting these uh, Matt Bredo, who you got at a discount, and then obviously Mostert, who you got off waivers. And I think you've been pretty happy with the production in the flex that you've gotten from these guys. So continue to monitor that. San Francisco is shaping up to be an offense that you may want a piece of based on the fact that they've come out every week and done their thing. They're undefeated now, and they've done it against some decent defenses, or at least what we thought were decent defenses um, coming into this year uh, on the other side of that game was the Pittsburgh Steelers and Johnny another guy that we are uh, we're looking at and going what the heck is happening here is James Conner um, this is three weeks in a row where James Conner has failed to put up any kind of numbers that that help you in fantasy for the most part um, and I'm just I'm sitting here wondering was he worth the first round pick was he worth a second round pick at this point are better days ahead for James Conner or are you trying to cut bait here uh, i gotta certainly say you know i am a little bit worried i have james connor in a, in a league and i'm really starting to worry as to what his outcome could be this season we've got a downgraded at the quarterback position kyle rudolph came in he he looked decent but again the strength of this offense was that offensive line now that ben roethlisberger was out and yet he couldn't muster up more than 43 yards and so there is some concern there. There's also concern that he hasn't received more than 13 carries in a game. You would expect him, you know, last year, it, you know, it's really buying into the whole thing of where they were just trying to show Le'Veon Bell that they didn't need him. And so that's why they were giving James Conner all these carries and all these touches because he hasn't even come close to that, those kind of touches this year. Uh, and, and so he hasn't even, you know, if he was getting, you know, maybe 16 to 18 touches, then I would say, you know, I'd, I'd feel a little bit better about it, but Travis 13 touches. I mean, Rex Brookhead well, got 11 he, he, for his team. He got 17 touches. He got 13 oh, carries, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, that is the, the one shining light here for me is that he's been used really well in the passing game four targets four targets five tar targets through the first three weeks uh in each game and so i think here the point would be you know jalen samuels didn't log a single touch in the game yesterday so even after the fumble they continued to ride james connor here i think that's the goal here for this offense is they're going to want a real you know stable running back here situation to for mason rudolph to lean on because they're going to need to do that in order to win football games. I will say that they're going to play uh, Cincinnati and then Baltimore, both of which have been actually susceptible to running backs. You would think Baltimore has been a little bit tougher. They've actually been gashed a little bit by the running back position. And so Cincinnati, we just saw Frank Gore run all over them with uh, you know no hesitation. If, if James Conner can't get it done in the next two weeks, you definitely need to be concerned. You should be a little concerned now. I think it's more about temporary – expectations is he the first round running back you drafted him to be probably not especially with the big ben injury but i think if he can't get it done in these next two weeks you're definitely uh you're screaming bloody murder murder then <laughs> um and then our last topic here was you know fresh off the sunday night victory or sunday night game uh last night we saw the browns play the rams in cleveland's first sunday night game in 11 years and they came down to a fourth down play, and they, they almost got it done. But I think more concerning here 
is Baker Mayfield. Johnny Baker is a guy that we loved coming into this year. I continue to love the guy as a player, as a, as a personality in the NFL, but he just hasn't put it on the field. Johnny, how much longer should Whisper Nation be waiting for Baker Mayfield? Honestly, if you find a better streamable option, if someone gets dropped in in the league, it, I'm I'm willing to you know cut Baker for that person. I would go Kyler Murray. Rest. I mean, I already made that deal before the season, but I think Kyler Murray will be better. I think that we're going to see Matt Ryan be better. I think that you know. There are a lot of quarterbacks right now that are playing well, and if you need to cut one of them or cut Baker in order to pick up one of those guys, Josh Allen, he's been playing way better than Baker Mayfield. Again, I do think at some point they'll kind of correct this ship, but maybe this is a point of like we were trying to crown them before they were ready to be into that, you know, elite status those title contenders because you look at what he's doing this year and it's it's a shell of himself travis last year he had a 5.6 percent td uh td throw percentage sorry i couldn't get that out uh touchdown rate. touchdown rate sorry thank you uh no worries this year he's sitting at 2.8 and you're thinking you know you're scratching your head you're like you just added obj you've got this offense in a way better position than it was last year and yet you know he's struggling and and so there are some head scratches there maybe they're trying to be too too do too much on offense and and it's confusing baker i'll tell you what he's holding the ball way too long and so you know, they talked about it multiple times on the show yesterday uh, while watching that Sunday night game that when he throws the ball in under, you know, a second and a half, he was killing it. But when he holds the ball over that, his, you know, his accuracy goes down, the the chance of them picking up chunk plays go down. So, uh, yeah, I liked I liked that point, too, Johnny, that they brought up on the SNF coverage last night. And that was mostly because when they throw it fast, their tackles don't have to block for that long. Mm -hmm. And the tackles tend to be the weak spot on this Cleveland offense offensive line. And so uh, without those tackles being able to block up against especially a team like the Rams, um, you're not going to be able to sit back there and wait for a route to develop with Jarvis or with OBJ. And I think that's the concern right now is that they need to figure something out and and make adjustments to what they can do quickly um, and to get the ball out of Baker's hands and do some more of that RPO, some of that. Um, I mean, you know, I, I just Chubb continues to look good. I think Chubb's a guy you're locked in, you know, unlike – James Conner, who was taken near him in a lot of first rounds, like you're happy with Chubb's production. He continues to be the bell cow for this offense. But I think other guys like OBJ still getting a ton of targets, still getting the looks. But, you know, the ceiling isn't quite there for the Browns yet. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, I don't understand why they don't go to OBJ more in the red zone. Like I don't. To what I I will have to uh, vet the stat, but I'm pretty sure OBJ didn't even get a single target in the end zone yesterday, which is no. And and to be fair, the the Rams did a lot of bracket coverage with OBJ. They had Talib on, um, you know, on a man to man, and then they would have it at the last second go and bracket OBJ. So to Baker's credit, he was seeing that and not going that way. Um, so I mean, he wasn't trying to force the issue, but I will agree. I think they need to be a little bit more creative. If they're not going to have the time to for routes to develop, work in OBJ on a slant. That's where he makes his money. And so, yes, are we a little concerned? Yes. Do we see a turnaround here, though, for Baker, for OBJ, for Jarvis, for the rest of this offense? Uh, I'm. I really hope so. I think if there was anybody that could do it, like this team is built uh, to do it, they just got to start executing their plays a little bit better. You know, yeah. You know, tar OBJ getting 31% market share or target market share for that offense. You do like that. If I'm going to try to buy anybody low, I, I you know, I would try to make an argument. You might be able to persuade the Nick Chubb owner because he hasn't he hasn't been extraordinary like we all thought he would be. He's been good and solid for you. So you might be able to get a deal done for Nick Chubb and OBJ. I would be making deals all week for OBJ or trying to. Well, that wraps it up for our ra our reaction after week three here. We went through our major storylines. Whisper Nation, if you've got any stuff you want to discuss with us, make sure you like and comment um, here if you're here on YouTube. And if not, catch us on all social media platforms. 
to end the show, we had a little fun segment that we wanted to add in here. Chelsea, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? Sure. Keep trade cut. It's basically what it says. I'm going to give you all a list of five names um, one at a time and just tell me quickly if you'd keep trade or cut that person. If you want to add a, a maybe a reason why. Okay. Um, I'm right. sure cool. lots of people in Whisper Nation are asking themselves these questions this week. So first up, we got Justice Hill. What do you think, Travi? Big uh, keep, trade, or cut Justice Hill? I'm cutting Justin Hill. Uh, I don't think you could get much value for him because he hasn't shown much value on the field yet. And it seems to be that Gus Edwards is the clear backup here. Yep. Every time that Mark Ingram uh, is spelled, it's, it's Gus Edwards. In a couple games, Gus Edwards actually got more looks and, and opportunities than Mark Ingram. Ingram has looked fantastic in this offense um obviously none of these guys are getting the targets that you'd like to see out of a running back so i'd cut justice hill great yeah, same here johnny darwin thompson keep trade cut uh after what we saw yesterday got one a uh, few touches at the very end i'm cutting him cutting him all right baker mayfield i know we just ended the show but keep trade cut let's make a clear decision i'm gonna keep uh baker mayfield uh i know we said it was kind of a um you know, make or break week for him. And it really was, but I just think that means you can bench him at this point safely if you have a better option, but I'm keeping Baker Mayfield. I want to see this offense get to the next level. Game time. Yeah. I'll keep him for now. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a lower threshold. (laughs) All right. Duke Johnson. Keep trade cut. I'm going to keep him and hold him because, you know, if anything were to happen to Carlos Hyde, I think Duke Johnson, he would be the only one left. And I just think that he's still trying to get, you know, his gameplay with the quarterback. They, they're they not used to using him. I think that better days are ahead for Duke Johnson. I hope you're right. Last but not least, Tyler Boyd. Ooh, keep trade cut Tyler Boyd. If you can get any value for Tyler Boyd, you should probably do it now. AJ Green is back on the horizon soon. Um, we've seen John Ross be a better option in this offense for them. And uh, although Mixon, not this week, yeah. But I think that uh, I, I think Tyler Boyd is a guy you should be looking at getting off of your roster if you can get value for him. Good. If not, I don't think you're starting him anytime soon. Awesome. I love this new segment. I like how quick it is. I'm excited about it. Thanks for bringing it to us, Johnny. Yeah, That's for sure. Yeah, so that does it for us. If you got guys that you're actually questioning about, like keep trade cut, if you had a storyline you wish we'd have gone over here, let us know. We'll keep working that into the show. As always, uh, we will continue to do this. Get over to thefantasywhispers.com. You can get all of our content across the board right there, all of our social media, all on the site. For Johnny Game Time Hicks, And Chelsea Lee Byers, I'm Big Travi. We are the Fantasy Whisperers, and we're out. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Whisperers podcast. You can hear more from John and Travis on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TF Whisperers. 